Hey guys, John here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sad vibrato lead in GMS, so I hope you have a box of tissues because we will get through this together. This is what it sounds like. so let's get through this so we have an eq here so this is at the end of the chain here on our channel strip so we have we're kind of cutting off the ends kind of taking out the mud and boosting some highs but we'll get to that at the very end so let's deactivate that for now turn off our compressor and let's turn off these effects as well so reverb off echo off phaser off and our flanger off and let's talk about the oscillators so for the first one we're going to be using square retro no pitch change at all so just default the next one's going to be silk and also no change just default Number three and the noise are not going to be used, so forget about that. The second oscillator is going to be at 0 0.40. And we are going to be using a little bit of the sync option here at 0 0.09, so just a little bit to add some of that flavor without it. So just a little bit of that adds kind of the flavor already. There's going to be no unison, so one voice, the one that you're hearing. So you don't have to worry about the stereo or the detune, but we are going to be using mono voice. So it's going to be one note at a time for this patch. Moving on to the filter, the cutoff is going to be at 0.81. It is going to be keyboard tracked and we're using a low pass filter with a little bit of resonance at 0.13. Now this keyboard tracking is very important for this patch because as we send notes, we kind of want the filter to open up a little bit. We don't really want it to, to be static because if, if it's not, it just kind of makes it boring. So with it off, I feel like I can see the filter and that bothers me. So turn the keyboard tracking on. There we go. Because that filter should open up as we ascend notes. It kind of gets that emotion out a little bit. Next, moving on to the envelope section, we're going to be using only one. As you can see, the second one, the amount is all the way to the bottom. So forget about the second one. So the first one. So what's happening here? First, I inverted it and it's going to the filter right over here. The attack's going to be kind of slow at 0.68, and the decay is at 0.61, and the amount's just a little bit at 0.27. Now, this is really kind of working the filter a little bit, kind of making it breathe a little more. So here's without it, and we're slowly going to introduce it. Moving on, we're going to be using one LFO. As we can see here, this LFO 2 is not going to be used. And this LFO is really probably the most important aspect of this patch as well. So the little amount is going to be 0.12. It's going to be synced to bar at 1 8th. Now what this is doing is you can see here it's selected on the frequency, so the master frequency, and we're using a sine wave to move that. So we're really adding that vibrato. That's what all these little squiggly lines are here. So it really makes it sad. So if we turn it down all the way, It kind of just doesn't work for that patch. So if we bring it up to point one two, now this you have to be very careful because a little too much you can ruin it. Now that's just ridiculous. Next up, the main envelope. The attack is going to be zero. The decay is at one. The sustain is at one, and then the release is at point seven six. So different note, but you get the point. Moving on to our effects here. The first one is going to be the flanger. So let's glue this. And what's cool with this flanger is I find a lot of the times that I don't really have to change too much of these parameters. So you, you can leave X and Y alone, the time and the feedback. And with that off. Gives additional movement to that sound. Moving on, we have the phaser. So let's glue this here. And same thing for this. I didn't even feel like I had to move these knobs. So that's always a win. Don't always feel like you have to adjust every single knob. Sometimes it just works. And if it does, take it as a win. Before we move on to the less ones, I kind of forgot this one here. We have a little bit of frequency slide. As you can see, the notes are kind of sliding in with each other. And we turn that on with this button here, and it's going to be kind of high at 0.37. So when we change notes, we can see how it's kind of rounded here. They slide into each other. With that off, so this is 0.37. Turn it up here, 0.37. 
There's a little bit of that, and it kind of does add. It's every little tiny screw that adds to the patch. Moving on to the Echo, we're going to glue this as well. This one, I did have to change the filter a little bit, but I left the feedback alone. So the filter is going to be about 0.27%, and we can see that on the top left up here. So it kind of opens it up a little bit without the uh, Echo. Kind of just static with the Echo. Next up, we're going to have our reverb to really open things up. Let's glue this. And the feedback, I did have to change to 0.63. And the filter, I don't think I changed that one. So this is what that sounds like. And at this point, I felt like I called the patch done. It kind of does what I kind of imagined it to do. So let's listen to it all together and let's get through this together. So if you notice here, this top part here, it kind of poked out a little bit too much, and that's where our compressor comes in. So before the compressor, we do generally want to EQ, and with that on, now with our compressor, keeps all those dynamics in check and then the EQ kind of sculpts that as well. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, press the like on the video itself and we'll see you in the next one.